All right, guys, here it is, uh, final show of 2019. It is the happy hour tip-off show. It is powered by wagertalk.com. I'm Joe Ranieri. He is Ralph Michaels. It's all about college basketball, guys, and it, uh, it comes to a close here tonight for 2019. But don't fret. We've got uh, an entire new decade, a whole new year just ahead of us, uh, just about 24 hours ahead of us here. We will have a brand new, really, start to what uh, is – it's conference play, really, Ralph. When we get back here, it'll be a new year. It'll be the start of a new decade. And really, we'll be diving in right into the heart of what uh, college basketball is all about. Yeah, you know, we see some ACC games today. We have some Big East games today. So, you know, before we do that, let's remind our viewers, uh, we will be dark tomorrow. There's only 12 games. And then uh, for the rest of the regular season, we'll be on every Monday through Friday. But Joe, it was a great start to the show. I know it's going to be an incredible 2020 and would certainly like to wish all our viewers a very happy and safe New Year's holiday. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, good day uh, yesterday, Ralph, as we uh, we threw a little Seton Hall people's way. We threw a little uh, – uh, forgot to throw a little Tulane, uh, get the points. At least they covered. So it was a good day for us. But – there were still some upsets there, Ralph, uh, yesterday uh, across the board here. There weren't some crazy ones, but there were 11 of a card of 45 games, I believe. So there were a few yesterday. Yeah, I mean, quite a few. There, there are more than, you know, I think Saturday and Sunday combined. And, you know, uh, why do you love college talk about basketball? We're not Harvard Don's game again, okay? I will never yeah. bet them, Ralph. If I live to be 100 years old, I ain't back in the Don's ever again. Well, you know, you look at the start, and that's what you love about college basketball. Okay, let's go back. Remember, what did South Carolina do their last game? Oh, yeah, they yep. whipped Virginia 70-59. <laughs> to 59. So true. And then what happens? You're a 23-point home favorite to Stetson, yep. and you lose by seven points. That wasn't even a buzzer beater. So uh, let's see. You score 70 on the road against Virginia. Yep. And then you score 56 at home against Stetson. You explain that, yeah, Joe. Yeah, no, you talk about letdown. You got to be kidding me. And the, and the Don's home, too, back-to-back -back for Harvard, trying to save a few bucks, you know, scheduling. Yeah, appreciate that, Harvard. Without their best player, too. So that's good stuff, Don's. Appreciate that. Dickens. Well, you know, a, a part of it, Joe, is, you know, I think, you know, I think there really is an advantage. Now, that game did go into overtime. Right. But, you know, you look at Harvard – you had a San Fran team that hadn't played in seven days. Mm -hmm. So you had a rusty team. And, you know, what did back-to-back -back games hurt these kids? These are 19-year-old kids that run around like crazy. So, you know, I think it actually is an advantage to play on those short games uh, versus a team that, that is rested like that. Lesson learned. Do not treat 18-year-olds uh, like, uh, like how you feel when you get up in the morning, Ralph, thinking that you played back-to-back -back games. Is that a good lesson? Yeah, well, you know, it, it's if you're over 12 beers or under 12 beers is how you feel. That's it's so true. They're, try not to confuse that, too, guys. Do not confuse that, all right? 18-year-olds can handle back-to-backs. Uh, there were some big performances last night, too, Ralph, across the board here a couple of games. Yeah, that TCU game was interesting, too. Desmond Bain uh, with George Mason there dropping 36-4, uh, 2-1. Uh, pretty all-around effort by him. Yeah, you know, you look at the guy who I listed at top, Jabri Blunt. It's mm -hmm. a kid I'm familiar with. He was he was at Cleveland State for three years, yes. so he transferred to NC Central, 33 points in 30 minutes, and uh, to sure Bowie, it's not the first time we've heard his name from Hofstra. Mm -hmm. 30, 35 points, six rebounds, six assists, and yep. again, yes, it was Gonzaga, and yes, they were a 20 plus point favorite against Detroit, but. You know, you got him in Woolridge. Yep. We, you know, when you have six rebounds, eight assists, couple steals, you know, my favorite guy. And Graves from Buffalo. Yes. You know, five, three, four are, the, are those kind of lines that I love. Yeah, we talked about that uh, that Buffalo Bonnies game there yesterday. That was a pretty good track meet. That was, uh, that was a pretty fun game. But when you look at it in totality, how did we do as far as uh, upsets here against the numbers, uh, covers, overs, unders? Uh, and, of course, you mentioned it right at the top there about that Stetson-South Carolina game. Just blown away by that with a 30-point cover, huh? Yeah. Uh, again, it's one of those you scratch your heads when you put in perspective, 
you know, uh, you. I think that's probably the most Virginia's given up. I didn't go and look, but uh, to go from one to the other, it's it shows you in college basketball, almost anyone could beat anyone on any given night. Yes, that's so true. And it started early yesterday too with Pitt and Canisius, uh, Ralph. There, that uh, that turned into be a bit of a track meet we didn't expect either. Yeah, you know, Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh is the team that's, uh, you know. They have one bad loss to Nickel State. Then they have two decent losses, two good losses to Louisville and West Virginia. So they're getting it done. They've been in some nail biters, uh, but I think it's going to help them down the stretch. You know, anytime you have one of the slowest pace offenses, it's going to give you the opportunity to leave some players in. But it shows you Pittsburgh's 331 out of 353 teams, but there's certain games where when the opponent's pressing the pace and you feel you need to cut, keep up with them, yep. that's a game where Pittsburgh's not going to be in the 80s very often. That was their high for the year, and in fact, they probably average in the, in the low 60s, but even when you're the better team and at home, if the other team is forcing the tempo and the game is close, it oftentimes forces you to up your tempo as well. Yeah, and how about, uh, you know, Georgia did their part. Austin P. not so much there, Ralph, as that game soared uh, under as well. Uh, Tom Cream and company over there in Georgia. But uh, they certainly uh, did their part to try and hit an over there. Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you put up 78 and – uh, I, I guess that's what you want to do going into a New Year's break is win by 30 at home and yeah. <laughs> and not have to worry about it. So it's so true. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, we do got uh, we got a card here, light card here today. But like you said, um, there is some action on the board. And of course, uh, before we uh, take a look here, guys, at uh, the markets and see exactly who's making some moves and who's not. Uh, why don't we go ahead, uh, Ralph, and uh, talk some trends and angles here on a couple of these games today? Well, you know, a couple sides and a couple totals like we always do. You know, Vermont is a team that, uh, you know, I know you've talked about, Joe, and, yeah. you know, you've been a fan of. Well, they're 14-4-1 and one against the spread at home, and that, that shows you why those Canamonts are playing well. And Drake, mm -hmm. I have Drake in both the side and the total. And I often don't use big ATS numbers for two years, but they are 29 and 13 against the spread the last two seasons. Damn. I mean, you know, you're talking about a team that plays in the Missouri Valley that doesn't get a lot of love, that used to be a bad team that's improved, and they just continue to cover. Drake also 2 8 and 1 over under their last 11, a slower paced team with good defense. Mm -hmm. And Georgia Tech, we know they play defense. They're 1 and 8 over under their last nine games. Interesting stuff here, Ralph, on the card today. Some, some good games too uh, you had mentioned the mo valley uh going at it here today drake bradley uh you've got uh, a couple of uh, feature games that we will talk about george washington vermont but there's a couple of games here uh at least uh early on right around 5 30 uh ralph that seemed to be getting some love how about georgetown providence i this is kind of flipped it opened up with providence being the favorite but uh there seems to be an awful lot of love coming georgetown's way and I, listen, I can't blame him. What uh, what he's managed to do there, good old Patrick Ewing, is uh, nothing short of uh, just great coaching, keeping that team together, getting rid of a few bad apples, and look at what happens here, Ralph. These kids can play basketball. Yeah, you know, you jettisoned some guys that, that were perhaps a cancer to the team, and, you know, what do they do? Well, they go out and beat Oklahoma State, SMU, and Syracuse, and, you know, the last three games have been easy, so – it's tough to say. I, I couldn't play against the Hoyas right now. I, you know, I, I agree with the line move just because they have, they have done nothing wrong since they made those moves back in December, the beginning of December. So what do you make uh, about Evansville, Ralph? There's another game here today that uh, just, uh, you know, seven and a half point uh, underdog. They open up against uh, Missouri State, but they, uh, they are getting some buyback here. You know, coaches embroiled and controversy and all of this, but there is some money flowing their way here today in this game against uh, Missouri State. Well, you know, I'm a wait and see guy when it comes to the, you know, without the coach there. So, sure. you know, it's they're off. They're off a win against Murray State in overtime at home. And, you know, now they're going on the road and. Um, you know, they're, they're not a good rebounding team at all. And, and, you know, that's what concerns me against Missouri state because Missouri state is a very good rebounding team. So I, you know, I, I, I do the wait and see approach. If, 
if I want to play against a team that has the coaching situation like they do, I have no problems with it. Right. But I'm not going to bet on that team until I know how the team reacts their first their first game out, and even more importantly, their first road game with without their head coach on the bench. Talk to me about this, um, uh, you know, well, I don't even want to bring them up, but there is a game here that seems to be getting two-way action here, Ralph, uh, and you mentioned them, uh, you know, Drake and Bradley. Uh, Bradley opens up as a five-point favorite, but now that has been cut in half, and the total has ballooned up to 133.5 from 127.5. So uh, we're seeing money go to the over. We're seeing money uh, go to Drake in this particular game. So this is a 7 o'clock Eastern time start. Uh, the, the People are not agreeing with the uh, with the odds makers to start with. Well, I... I understand the move. I don't agree with it, but I understand it because if you look at Drake, you know, they've they've played some crappy teams and they scored 78 against Southeast Missouri and 92 against a lower division team and then 85 against Air Force, which is a slower paced team. So you look at those numbers and you say, well, their offense is really going. But, you know, you're, you're talking about a Drake team that you know, those last three opponents I talked about mm -hmm. have a defense of 341, a defense of 275, and a non-division team. So you're now facing a team, Bradley, that has a defense, a top 120, top 130 defense in the league. So uh, when, when you get to conference play in those first games and there's familiarity and there's there's an intenseness to it, which maybe we didn't see on the defensive front. You know, my automatic lean is with the unders. And uh, what about uh, on the card here, Ralph? There's not, uh, of course, there's not a ton of uh, dogs here uh, today on the card uh, with the abbreviated schedule. But there's, uh, you know, there's a couple of big numbers on the board, like, you know, Boston College getting 23 against uh, Duke and those types of things there. Did anything uh, stand, uh, stand out to you here on the card as far as uh, maybe a little mismatch? Well, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna combine the dog with a system. Now, I went in and I actually liked Air Force at the start of the day a little bit, and then when I looked in and I saw, you know, Riverside really slows the pace. And I'm gonna add a situational system to this. And again, you know, when we talk about team angles, we don't always have a, a system to go over on the play, but. You know, angles are team specific. Systems can be anyone in that category. And and teams that are a favorite of two and a half or more off a loss as a favorite against an opponent off a win as a dog. So, you know, a lot of times people think, well, this team, Air Force, lost as a favorite. Mm -hmm. You think they're going to bounce back. You think Riverside won as a dog outright. You think they may fall back. So you would think that it's a positive record for that favorite that lost as a favorite the last time. It hasn't been, Joe. It's only been 17-34-1, 33% against the spread. Wow. And that system would say to fade Air Force in that favorite's role and back the team that's off an upset win that, again, plays a very slow pace. Um, you know, originally my, my thought was Air Force has a unique offense and it's really tough to plan for. But, you know, uh, Riverside, Riverside's as slow as any team. I mean, they're in that Virginia range. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this this game could be first one to 60 wins. Wow. OK, so uh, talk to us here, Ralph, about uh, uh, we do have a couple of marquee matchups here. One of them happens to include uh, a dog that I actually do like uh, in one of them. But. Uh, let's focus on what's happening here with St. John's and Butler here. And we've talked about uh, Butler a lot here. St. John's, not so much this year, but uh, this is an interesting game. Butler, of course, uh, is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this number, has this number moved? Uh, no, opened up at four. It's still at four. Butler, a four-point favorite against St. John's. Uh, but the total has been coming down in this, Ralph. Opened up at 138. I'm seeing a lot of 135s across the board here. What do you like in this game? Well, you know, much like yesterday's game when we had an injury from the star player and we didn't know if he was going to play for Seton Hall and oh, what did we talk about? If we said, <laughs> if he plays, you bet them. Yeah. And the line moved a point or two, but he's worth more than a point or two. So, you know, a, a, another winner from yesterday's show. And I'm going to say close to the same thing, but the opposite. 
you know, Butler to me is an elite defensive team. St. John's, you know, you look at St. John's and you say, wow, they're, you know, they're 11 and 2. Their losses are to your Vermont Catamounts mm-hmm. and, and Arizona State. They just beat Arizona. They beat West Virginia, that same West Virginia team that just knocked off Ohio State. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you look, but they they may be without Mustafa Heron still. Right. Now, they beat Arizona without Mustafa Heron, but they need his body in there. Six foot five. You know, he's a guy that can get physical. Butler's a very, very physical team. And if you're watching the game tonight and you turn it on, it's on FS1, I believe, Fox mm-hmm. Sports 1. If you see Mustafa Heron not playing, then I am on the Butler side. Okay. If you see Heron playing, I am on the pass side. So, um, you know, another situation where a player is very important. And, you know, in the NBA, you know, Giannis goes out, and he, the line may move six or eight points. Right. In college, you don't get that same type of movement. Although some of these players, I mean, some of them aren't worth, you know, more than one or two. But there are a lot of players, and I think Heron's one of them, that is is worth more than that. Interesting game that's uh, going to be there tonight. I understand also the move uh, down as far as the total goes. Uh, neither one of these, t- I, I would think defense is going to be a priority in this game here tonight. Butler plays at a slower pace. I think they only average about 67, 68 possessions, uh, at least in their last couple of games. Uh, not a ton of points, but they, uh, I, I do think that St. John's, the Red Storm, uh, not as big a threat as offensively as they have been in the past. So as this number continues to creep down, the uh, the under is also seven three and one in uh, in St. John's last eleven home games. Uh, it it probably is the uh, the value play of that game. Well, you know, you want to talk contrasting styles. Yeah, <laughs> Mike Anderson at St. John's. Mm-hmm. They shoot the ball. They are the sixth fastest team to shoot the ball. Get it up there. <laughs> Butler is three forty two. Mm-hmm. So you only have five teams faster than St. John's. And you only have 11 teams slower than Butler. So, you know, it, it, when you have that kind of game, it really is. Uh, who controls the pace? Yeah. You know, as as the the hand up or the edge in the game to me. Yep. And it's, uh, I mean, listen, their, their defense is, uh, they've been holding guys to under 40%. I think even under 38% they're shooting. So St. John's defense, a big reason why they started off um, that well here. So tomorrow, Ralph, you had mentioned only 12 games on the card and one of those uh, featured games, Marquette taking on Creighton. Uh, Another big matchup there, New Year's Day. What do you think of this game? Well, you know, again, you probably have two of the most elite shooting teams in the country. You know, Marcus Howard, I think, has topped 30 points five times already. And anytime you have, you know, anytime you have him playing, I, you know, I make the game Creighton two. So, you know, we'll have to see what the line is if I like anyone. Right. You know, if they come pick them or one or two, then I'm not going to have a play. If Creighton opens up a bigger favorite, I'm going to be on Marquette. Uh, if Marquette opens up a favorite, I'm going to be on Creighton. But, you know, as far as three-point shooting goes, you know, efficiency, Creighton number 31 in the country, Marquette number one in the country. Mm-hmm. They're shooting 42.7% from three-point land. But I will say this, they have only faced two top 40 um defenses Creighton's not a top 40 but just to give you perspective you know where where they've played uh they did well against Kansas State Kansas State is a top 40 defense and they were without Howard that game I believe or Howard played injured a little bit Mm -hmm. it wasn't a great game for him and they still put up 73 65 in the win and then their other game against Purdue where they were held to 65 points, the defense actually showed up and played 55. So Marquette's an interesting team because they played a couple games without Howard, and it got them playing better defense as well. Their defensive efficiency this year, they're a top 50 team, um, and that was really why they ended up losing. You know, Remember, they were a team that was – 23 and something last year 
Then they ended up losing five or six of their last seven games and, and really struggled down the stretch. So uh, Howard, Howard getting hurt helps them. Uh, this is only their second true road game. They lost at Wisconsin, and then they, they did beat Kansas State, but at least they have been tested. Going into Wisconsin and going into to Manhattan, Kansas, that does get you ready for conference play in my book going into Creighton. So, again, my line is Creighton minus two. Depending on where Vegas posts the number will will depend on if we have a play or not. Yeah, another one of the uh, the games tomorrow, Rob, I'm looking at it, and a team that you and I uh, like and have followed and uh, is just is dominated here. I'm looking forward to seeing what the line is in this uh, New Mexico-San Jose State game. I have no doubt it's going to be an easy victory for New Mexico, but I'm interested in the total because, again – Talk about styles. We got two teams that, um, shall we say, uh, with the ability of New Mexico to put up points and the tempo of uh, San Jose State there, I think, uh, uh, what are they, 50? They're in the 50s, I believe, as far as uh, tempo goes there. Uh, the, this has got overwritten all over it, depending on what the number is. If it's not too crazy, I, I think New Mexico is an easy win there for them tomorrow as well. Well, I'm looking at their past couple matchups, or I'm trying to pull it up as we talk. Um, you know, last year, San Jose actually won yeah. at New Mexico, 92 to 60. Oh. And then, uh, no, actually, excuse me, San Jose State lost at New Mexico, 92 to 60. But then San Jose State did beat them at home, 89-82. That game was on February 26th. Mm. So you do have a situation of New Mexico, you know, not looking past San Jose State, knowing mm. that they went in there last year and lost. And San Jose State, you know... Uh, they, they did win against Pepperdine in a game at home that, you know, Pepperdine is not anywhere near New Mexico's level. But San Jose State's a team that's 4-10 and 10 this year. Mm -hmm. One of those wins against a non-conference foe. Uh, and, and they have been tested. They've played a very difficult schedule, and mm -hmm. it shows another one of those that, that, that need the cash. But, you know, they're in, they're in now, what, the third season. Mm -hmm. And... You know, it's tough to know what you're going to get from them. Uh, Gene Perlo is their head coach. They had four wins in his first season. Mm -hmm. They only had four wins last year, and now they only have four wins. So they're going to improve on the four wins, but they still haven't made that turn or the progression mm -hmm. in the second year of a head coach that you want to see and then hopefully moving forward in the third year. All right, so we've got uh, we got a couple of games here tonight, a couple of games uh, tomorrow, guys. Obviously, we'll be back on Thursday here, but uh, best bets on the way out here, Ralph. Which uh, which of these games are you leaning towards here today? No, I I posted one play for my customers at Wager Talk, and uh, you know, as I said, when we get into this conference play, I'm a fan of the unders, and I have the under in Miami of Florida, Clemson, and. You know, Miami's been efficient in offense, but you look at who they played recently, it's not impressive. Clemson, a slower place team with defense. These teams are familiar with each other. Uh, and the total, you know, I liked it at 135. I actually see some 135 and a half, see so maybe even a 136. So, you know, I like it even more. Uh, I tell you, Ralph, I'm going with. Um... I'm going to go with a dog here, man. I'm going to hop on Ryder getting 13, 13 and a half points here against Wisconsin. I'm not buying into the whole Wisconsin one-game sample size against uh, Tennessee there on Saturday. Uh, Tennessee, to me, looked like they were always going to struggle in that game, as do, uh, you know, as, as point guards usually do for the first time out all year. Um, listen, the Badgers might have looked really good at times there. They're still 5-10 and 10 against the number in their last 15 games. I think it's a good matchup spot for Ryder. Got a lot of size. They got some depth down low. And let's face it, they've done well against Big Ten in recent outings. 4-1 and one against the number in their last five against the team from the Big Ten. 13.5 points, double digits. I'll take Ryder. I'll take the points here in this game. Yeah, Ryder, I mean, their last game was, you know, last Saturday, the 21st. It was a game they went into Temple and lost by 12. You know, they are a, a faster-paced team. So, you know, if, if they could break that Wisconsin defense and, and push the Temple and get some, you know, get some baskets, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. They, uh, 
they're a team that uh, you know, doesn't doesn't shoot a lot of threes, mm-hmm. and and they they drive. So Wisconsin's going to have to get back on defense, and and they're used to playing slower. So interesting contrast in styles. Yep, should be an interesting game here, guys. And of course, uh, don't forget plays up here all uh, over the next forty eight hours here, right through New Year's. Uh, you've got them at wagertalk.com. And, uh, of course, you can get it uh, over on uh, Rouse page there at wagertalk. Make sure that you're visiting right there, wagertalk.com. Hop on the Handicappers page, Cal Sports. You'll see it. Make sure you're tailing uh, Ralph all uh, all week long here at Cal Sports LV on Twitter. And get ready, man. You got some college hoops today on New Year's Eve. College hoops tomorrow and uh, New Year's Day. You got some bowl games and then really right back at it, Ralph, towards the end of the week here, man, as uh, conference play continues in college hoops. Yeah, Joe, you know, we, you, you go back and, and you, you know, we'll we'll be back on Thursday. You know, we have the West Coast Conference playing St. Mary's and the Dons. Mm-hmm. You'll be happy to know that'll be the that'll be the uh, premier matchup that I'm going to put on that we talk about. Of course but, you are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, Minnesota's at Purdue, Oregon's at Colorado, Oregon. I mean, Oregon, Colorado is clearly the top play of the game, but Oregon State, Utah is a great game. Uh, say even St. Louis, Duquesne. I mean, yep. there's there's a lot of good matchups, and conference play gets underway when we'll be back on uh, Thursday. Second. Yeah, that's correct, guys. So we'll see you on Thursday. Make sure you get over to wagertalk.com between now and then. And on behalf of Ralph, uh, myself, of course, everyone at Sports Memo and wagertalk.com, wishing you guys a very safe and happy new year. Uh, come back and join us on Thursday, and uh, we'll do it all over again, Ralph. So happy new year, my friend. Enjoy the games. Good luck with your play, man. We'll talk again on Thursday. Hey, guys, and don't forget, $2 Tuesday, you had to show me Prez's $2 oh, right yeah, at Wake yeah, Talk. Yeah, That's yeah, the way you leave the show. Like I, don't know who's, I don't know who's at Sports Memo, but you know what? It's such a deal between Sports Memo and Wager Talk to get the hottest handicapper and, yep. and get get their top play for 2 bucks. So yep. uh, it's something you guys got to check out, and even so, yeah. even if it is Prez today. Exactly. Like, I don't even want to have to give him the credit, but the dude has just been on fire in the uh, in the NFL. I think, what is it, 4-1 and one last week, 80%. He's just been crushing it. So getting ready to head into, I believe, uh, the weekend here with the wild card games, I believe that's uh, part of the $2 play he's got up there. So head over to wagertalk.com, guys. Check it out, but have a happy new year. Come back and join us on Thursday. College hoops it is. Ralph, happy new year, man. Joe, happy new year, bud. We'll talk to you in uh, in 47 hours. Hey, I had to do uh, math there. I, I had to add 23 and 24. Yeah, I'm, I'm still pissed off at the Dons, guys. Happy new year. We'll talk to you again on Thursday.